Oh my goodness, man. What? What are you saying, Rahat? Okay. All right, all the rules of logarithms, the way we solve natural log problems is, gentlemen, is the exact same way we do with natural log. There's no, there's no change. It's just a log with a different base. It's special. You have a calculator on your, on your, um, a button on your calculator that does natural logs. So the letter E is a mathematical constant and it's an irrational number. Give me the most popular mathematical constant that's irrational and that has a symbol. We have, it's pi, right? Like pi has a symbol. It's irrational. And we all know it. We're all really comfortable with it. We use it all the time. And we don't bat an eyelash. E is the exact same thing. It's just a little less popular. It doesn't have a day. Um, so... Let's begin with the letter E. It's a mathematical constant named after the Swiss, Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler. And the value of E is this. Okay, 2.71 is, or 2.72 is really what you need to remember. <coughs> Pardon? E is a mathematical constant. Why? Because it's irrational. And we usually use a, a letter to represent an irrational number because it never ends and never terminates. Is it on the calculator? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah
that has a value of 1. Right? So if we changed from log form, so log base 2 argument 2 equals something. We don't know what that something is. It would be base to the exponent of something equals 2, and we know that would be 1. So same thing here, L and E, what's the base on a natural log? E. And if my argument is E, if the base and the argument are the exact same thing, the value will be 1. I say this because this is a little, like, nice thing to have in your back pocket. You know you can evaluate that to 1. Anything times 1 is itself. You can move on. All right. So... Ln e equals log base e, e to the exponent e, or sorry, e to the exponent something equals e. It's going to be a value of 1. So all good in the hood. Now we're going to graph these things. All right, basic log graph. Basic log graph. What base is on this log? 10. 10. Good job, everybody. So do I make up my y values or my x values? Y for a logarithm. All right. So if we know, if I were to put this in exponential form, this would be 10 to the exponent y equals x. So what's 10 to the exponent 1? 10. 10 to the exponent 2? 100. Uh, 10 to the exponent 0? 1. 1. 10 to the exponent negative 1? One? 1 over 10. And to the negative 2 is going to be 1 over 100. Do you guys all feel confident graphing logarithm graphs? Sort of, kind of? With logarithms, I make up the y's. Uh, okay, so let's graph this. Um... Probably, mm, let's do go by twos. Where is my asymptote on a logarithm graph? Zero. Y equals zero. Thank you. No, x equals zero. Hey, we all, it's a really common error to make. What? Y equals zero. Is an exponential. Yeah. So we know that our asymptote should be on the x-axis, correct? So we know that x is equal to zero. Any vertical asymptote is going to be an x equals. So we've got asymptotic behavior at the y-axis. But you guys all know that. Right? You all know that? So when x is 1, y is 0. When x is 10, y is 1. Okay, I can't graph my 102. So 1 tenth is negative 1. That's really close to the line. Smooth curve. Do I need to draw my asymptote in? Do I need to draw my asymptote in? No. No, I do not. But what do I need to have? Asymptotic behavior. Asymptotic behavior. So don't cross that asymptote. So people, I think you asked me this question the other day, like, do I graph, do I actually put points on the graph for those tiny ones? And I would say no, right? I would get really, really close to that line. And the two points I would label would be the things that are nice whole numbers that are easy to plot. And keeping in that same thing, now we're going to graph a logarithmic graph, or a natural log graph. We just grab, graphed your logarithmic. Okay. What do we make up? The x's or the y's? The y's? It's still a log graph. It's just got a funky base on it. So we've got negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. All right. What do we know... So what's the base on this thing? 
E. What do we know the value of E is? Just like when you tell me pi is 3.14, what's the value of E? 2.7 Q if we were to round it. So E is approximately 2.72. And that number you need to remember. This, these natural log graphs can show up on booklet two, no calculator provided. So you need to have this information stored somewhere in your brain. All right, so what is E to the exponent zero? What's anything to the exponent zero? One. What's E to the exponent one? E, which is? 2.72. And what is... Enough? Pardon? Is that accurate enough to use? Yep. Okay, so we're not going to get super accurate with these. <laughs> like, don't overmath it. Uh, what is e to the negative 1? 0.27. So if I didn't have a calculator, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to break like a mathematical grammar problem. I'm just going to look away from this for a second. What's my grammar problem that I'm breaking? A decimal and a fraction. Wait, you're not allowed to do that? Oh my god. Not, <laughs> not for a final answer. Like when you're working through stuff, putting a decimal in is fine if you're, if you're still working through stuff. But what would you say that's close to? What whole number would you say that denominator is close to? Three. Do you guys know how to deal with one third? Yeah. Then you know how to deal with one over 2.72. <laughs> right? You know what one third is approximately. So you know approximately what one over 2.72 is. Like, don't overthink this, and it doesn't have to be exact. Nobody caused me any grief when I, like, randomly placed a point on the graph kind of for this thing here. Give yourself a break. This is what you need to know. This is what you need to know. All right, so we're going to graph it. Where's my asymptote? Yep, it's a log graph. It's just got a funky base. It's still a log graph. There's no transformations on it. So our asymptote is still here. Okay. Logan was like a little traumatized by that. <laughs> How do you guys like what I put for the y value at my point when x? Oh. That's not correct. There I am showing off and I got it wrong. What's my problem? Those are in the wrong place. Let me just wait the whole thing out and then I can write it below. There we go. I used a letter. I used the letter E. You could put 2.72 as well, that's fine. Um, so nothing really like shocking or amazing there, but people get all weirded out because it's not whole numbers and it feels a little uncomfortable. But really it's the exact same strategy we use to log any other, or graph any other logarithmic graph. Would you be wrong if you just put 2.72? You would not be. I was just showing off. Okay, y equals e to the exponent x. So y equals e to the exponent x. Which side am I making up this time? X's or y? X, right? Exponential graphs, we make up the x values. 
logarithmic graphs, we deal with the y values. Where's my asymptote on an exponential graph? Y equals zero. Now we're on the we're back to the horizontal. We're back to chapter seven. Um, so let's go through this again. This is going to be 2.72. This will be one. This will be one over 2.72. Do you see how I'm actively ignoring squaring that and putting it to the negative two? I'm just kind of like, you guys didn't question me. I didn't talk about it. I have no desire to square 2.72 by hand. Like, you don't need that point. You know what the graph is going to be. Uh, okay, this graph, we anticipate we're going to have a horizontal asymptote uh, at y equals zero. We know that the graph will be, is it going to be increasing or decreasing? Increasing. How do we know that? X goes up, Y goes up. We also know that our base number is greater than 1. But really all you need to know is that as the X's go up, the Y's go up. Oh, geez. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Do you guys label every increment? Am I the only kid who does that? No. Okay, that makes me feel better that I'm not alone. Okay, so FYI, you can have transformations on a natural log graph, okay? You're going to treat it exactly like it's a logarithm graph. You just have that funky base of E. So we're not going to do any transformations today on the graph, but they'll probably show up. On the assignment. Of course. Just to emotionally abuse you. All right, super cool features of natural logs. Property of logarithms hold true for natural logs. The graphs can be transformed the exact same way we did in 8.2, and log theorems or log laws also apply to natural logs the same way they do any other logs. So just know that a natural log is a regular logarithm, and you're going to apply anything else. Oh, this is exciting. Okay. So useful equalities, so things that are equal to each other. Can you guys tell me why that one works? Uh, it has a base of C and the R C. What would I apply to this side here? What log law would I apply to this side here? Uh, the power. So we would have X equals L N argument E, which is one. That's pretty cool. All right, let's do this one. If I have a base of E, like ignore that there's a logarithm already in there. There's just some exponent. If I have a base of E, what kind of log am I going to apply? I'm going to convert from exponential form. So I'm going to convert from exponential form here to logarithmic form. Go. Do it. Sorry, now I'm screwed up. Um, 
So what happens here? Base goes on the natural log, right? If it's the base of this, that's why we're applying an LNE. So we're going to have LNE base this. Argument, this is my argument, so that's to the X equals L N X, right? Everybody with me? If I put that in exponential form, you guys following? The exponent goes outside in a logarithm, right? So log base argument Right? Remember that? We did that the other day. We put that on our notes. And then the other part of that was base exponent equals argument. I'm just running out of room, so I'm just going to put arg. So we have it in this form. I want it in this form. But because the base is E, what kind of log are we going to attach to it? A natural log. So I went ln the base is E, the argument gets put in here, and the exponent goes outside. So what do we know about L, N, E? L, N, E. What do we know? One. One. So do you guys agree that these are same logarithms with the same base on each side? Yeah? Hopefully. They look the exact same. Uh, what do we do with that? Drop the log, right? We did that in 8.1. These ones are the toughest, having logarithms in exponential form and then switching it to exponential or switching it to logarithmic form. And we've done this one already, so you guys know that. All right, that's fun. Everybody excited about that? Sort of, kind of? Not really? Okay. Let's apply some log laws here, and we're going to expand them. So you're going to use 8.3 with natural log. What's happening to the numerators? They're being multiplied. So when I expand them, what are we doing to them? Thanks. And then when we're dividing... Am I done? You got to bring the powers to the front. I got to apply the power laws. I do it in two steps. I'm sure you guys are okay to do it in one. And that's totally cool if you do it in one step. Okay. Let's solve. 8.4, 8.4. I have exponents. Are they the same base? No, one's an E, one's two. They're not the same base. So if they're not the same base, then I'm going to log both sides. But what kind of log am I going to use? A natural log. It doesn't matter if we're using a natural log here on this one, but you have to apply the same type of log to both sides. You have to either apply both logs or both natural logs. I'm going to do natural logs and then I want to do it with regular logs and see if it works out. I know you're super excited for that. That's it. We just expanded it. What do I have to do here? Now I have to do my power law. And then I get a backwards distribute. Anybody see anything on the left hand side I can clean up right away? Exactly. What's that have a value of? One. Because it's base E, argument E, so it's going to have a value of one.
What do I do now? Yep, exactly. Bring anything within X to the same side. So I'm going to move everything to the left. So I'm going to have X minus X ln2 equals ln2. Next up. Hmm? Ooh, sorry. Common factor that X out. We often drop that one, but please don't do that because then your answer will be incorrect. We're going to divide this side by 1 minus ln2, 1 minus natural log 2. And don't forget to use brackets on the bottom. And we'll go four decimal places just to live on the edge. I know. It's a wild and crazy time here. Uh, did anybody try that with regular log? Anybody try that with regular log? No? All right. What do we got going on here? How many more pages? Oh, only three more. Let's go four. We've done three, haven't we? We're golden. We're golden. Um. All right, go ahead and solve this one, please and thank you. I want you guys to tackle it. I'm going to freeze the screen and I'm going to try. You guys are going to try. Did you log both sides? Yes. How do you know when to do an natural log and when to do a like a log or something? Anytime you have a base a base E, use a natural log. Do we have to log both sides, right? Yes. So I'm gonna log both sides and I'm gonna natural log both sides. And then I'm going to apply a power law. It's kind of crazy. What happened to my LNE? What happened to my LNE? What's the value of LNE? One. So I just got rid of it because anything times by one is itself, right? Oh, LN2X plus one. Did you guys get here? Did you guys get to this point? Do you know what to do next? What's the next thing, Tristan? <laughs> Fair. Uh, looks a little bit complicated, looks like we're stuck at this point, but if we have one log on either side and they have the same base, what do we do to those logs? Murder them. We drop them. Oh. 
Yeah. Right? We just drop them. They go away. So then we're left with argument equals argument. So that one was like, like I said, when you have logs inside of exponential form, it's really unsettling. Like it just doesn't make a lot of sense. But if you have a base of E somewhere, use a natural log because you're going to probably end up with an ln E that has a value of one that you can get rid of. So when you do ln times one, which what? So you know, like, like this here. No, the other LM. Here? No. Here. So that's down. Here? Here? Where? Up to the second Here? row. Uh-huh. All the way to the left. Uh-huh. Left, 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 left. Okay, sorry. That, <laughs> that times the one. Times what one? That one right there. This one here? Yeah. yeah. I didn't multiply it in. That 2x plus 1 is my entire argument. I didn't do anything oh. with that. I took the L and E and said that has a value of 1. And 2x plus 1 times 1 is still just 2x plus 1. Maybe putting brackets around that might make a little bit more sense. But when you have a single log on either side, that's when you just drop the logs. Okay, how did we feel about that one? Great, not great? Okay, that one, like I said, the exponents, like a log inside of an exponent is a kind of a pain in the butt. All right, here we go. You guys are like, there's a log on each side, I just drop them and I go ahead, but I can't. Why can't I? Is everything log? One isn't log. One isn't log, so I can't drop my logs, right? In order to drop logs, you have to have a single log on either side. So I'm gonna bring all my logs with variables together. What do you suggest I do? Super helpful if we have one log in an equation, because then we can change it to exponential form. So I'm going to apply a log law. You guys need to make like a study sheet or something with all these stupid solving log law things. Like if it's the same base, single logs on either side, same base, just drop them. If you only have one log in an equation, then put it into exponential form. Like there's a lot of stuff to do in this. So my question is, is six harder than eight? Was chapter six harder than eight? And I would say no. Like I think six is easier than eight, but very rarely do the students agree with what... Okay, so if I have a single log, I'm going to put this into exponential form now. What's the hidden base on the natural log? E. E to the exponent what? You only have two other options. Okay, if we go back to here... We go back to here. Where does the exponent live in logarithmic form? Outside. So e to the exponent 1. Exciting. What do I do here? This is, is, is E fancy? No, it's just a number. What is it? 2.72, right? So what am I going to do? If this was a 3, what would you do? Times both sides by X. Because I want to get rid of denominators. I'm going to minus x from both sides.
Okay, now at this point, you may want to switch to the 2.2. You may want to use the E button in your calculator um, if that's helpful to you. Uh, 2.2 minus 1, or 2.72 minus 1 is? 1.72. So we have 1.72x equals 1. I'm just going to write that in there just so that we all remember that, right? So how do I get x by itself? Divide. And this isn't going to be exact because we did some hardcore rounding, which is kind of bad oh bad. Um, but it gets the job done. Four decimal places. If I have 3x minus x, what would you get? Oh, right. 2, right? So we're just, to, that's why I put that 2.72 there. Because that's all really E is. It's a rounded value. Okay, so this little bit down here is where we apply logs, natural logs, um, exponential functions. So we've done the exponential growth, we've done the exponential decay, we did an interest problem today. Uh, this is the formula that I use for compound interest in essentials. Um, continuous compound interest is this one. Acidity, we use logarithms. Richter scale, you've done that. The decibels, the brightness of stars, radio tuning, x-ray absorption. We did one on uh, filters of light through welding masks. Like logarithms are used in many places. I can't show you every possible equation. So just trust your math and you will be okay. I promise. All right. Um, do I want to leave it there? Do I want to keep going? I think we're going to leave it here. And then we'll finish. Honestly, it's just this example page. I thought it was pretty fast. It was only 38 minutes. Had we not done exam questions before, we would have got through it.